Let me continue to give you a live report of our Museum of Explorations Ministry. This week, we continue to work with our interior designer and calligrapher to prepare some exhibition equipment and artifacts, etc. We purchased some glass cases to display our exhibits. And here are some more papyrus drawings waiting to be framed and displayed. We also purchased a mannequin put on the high priest garment. You'll see it at our exhibits area entered into the Old Testament world. Wow, this full-size high priest model is even taller than me. It will certainly help us to explain Old Testament background on priesthood and sacrifice offering. We also want to use the latest technology to teach biblical background more effectively. We just purchased two rotating TV. We can play some videos or illustrations to explain our exhibits. The TV has wheels and can be placed anywhere. It will become a mobile guide for our museum. We continue to plan for our renovation, designing our electrical outlets, security camera system, sound system, etc. Once we open, we welcome all churches to come to our museum for a visit to learn biblical background together. We'll also publish videos online to equip believers worldwide. Even more so, we welcome non-Christians to visit our museum. Imagine, if new friends come to our museum, through some archaeological evidences and biblical background studies, they'll know that the Bible is trustworthy, prompting them to get to know Jesus Christ. How meaningful would that be? A few weeks ago, a church in Vancouver offered 5,000 Canadian dollars to support us through their missions funds. That's so encouraging to us. We thank God for His provision. Let me invite your church to consider supporting our museum ministry through this mean. If you haven't had a chance to learn about our museum vision, we invite you to watch the following video about the resources we are going to use to build our museum ministry. In the last episode, we have explained our museum name and the concept behind our museum ministry. This time, we are going to share the resources we will use to build our ministry as well as our supporters. Now, if you've been to a museum, it's not just a random collection of artifacts. A museum needs set up lighting to present the exhibits properly. We also need to feature explanations, illustrations, maps, etc. for teaching the material. So you might ask, what resources does our organization have to build such museum ministry? Today, we're going to share nine resources with you all, and through which you can take a sneak peek into our future museum. Resource number one, our museum is going to feature highlights from past exhibitions. Now, Dr. Francis Choi, our executive director, has visited over 200 museums worldwide. So he has seen so many themes to help us understand biblical background. For example, Dr. Choi visited the Israel Museum in 2013, where a special theme on Herod the Great was featured. And then he came back to the Israel Museum again in 2016, where there's a special theme about Pharaoh in Canaan. So certain themes in our future museum will be derived from the valuable research conducted from visiting these themes back then. Resource number two, our museum is going to feature exceptional craftsmanship showcase. While many of our exhibits are authentic ones bought from Israel, some are replicas, and we are planning to partner with different artists to help us make these artifacts. For example, we're going to make use of 3D printing technology. 
check out this tail dance inscription that we've made through 3D printing. Now it looks pretty much the same as the original, right? We will also partner with jewelry designer. For example, we invite them to make the Tutankhamun's ring for us. We will also partner with sculptors who help us make these Canaanite or Egyptian scarab, these stamps. So we have the images and the sculptor will help us make these artifacts. Next, we will also partner with ceramic artists. Now this ancient figurine you've seen here were made by Egyptians to commemorate an occasion after they've taken someone captive. So we have the image, we're going to ask this, the artist to help us make this figurine. And after painting, the replica looks pretty much the same as the original. Now we'll also partner with Papyrus Drawing Artist. These have been framed already and they are currently in Dr. Choi's residence, ready for exhibition. But there are also many more yet to be framed and get ready to display. These are all valuable resources to teach biblical background, especially about Egypt. Resource number three. Our museum is going to feature 360 degree aerial presentations. Over the years, we have taken so many videos and photos with our drone. So whenever our museum tries to introduce a biblical location to the visitors, we can have our TV screen on the side to play some of our aerial footage that we've captured. And that's going to offer you a bird's eye view of the location we're going to study. In the past, we've taken our drone to eight countries, over 600 archaeological sites, over 2,500 flights we've flown, and we've taken about 8,500 video clips, also countless photos. Just to give you a few examples of our aerial photography. We captured Israel in many locations. Also, the pyramid in Egypt. And then this is the Agora, the marketplace in Athens, Greece. We've captured beautiful footage from Rome where Paul faced his trial. And also, this would be Patmos where John wrote the book of Revelations. Resource number four. Our museum is going to make use of reconstructed archaeology illustrations. Here's an exhibition you see on the forum in Rome showing the Arch of Titus. Notice these two reconstructed archaeology illustrations on the wall showing us what the place and people were like back then. Look, we have these two illustrations too. Here's one. And there's another close-up. You might ask, where did we get all these illustrations that's on display from a museum? Well, we are thankful to partner with a specialist on archaeology illustration. His name is Balaj Balo. We've purchased so many illustrations that he has drawn. Just to give you a few more examples, this is what Jerusalem looks like in New Testament times. And if you want to walk along the streets on Ephesus, this is what it would look like back then. And this would be what the Agora from Athens, Greece looked like. Resource number five. We've collected many important artifacts from museums worldwide, and they are all to be featured at one single location. And that would be our future museum. So there's no need to fly to British Museum, to fly to Israel Museum, or to fly to Istanbul Museum separately. We can all see the highlights from these museums at one single location. Wouldn't that be meaningful? Resource number six. Our museum will feature specialized resources that are very rare. Dr. Choi visited many museums over the year, and he has bought many books and resources from these museums. 
And these resources are not available at any bookstores or online because many of these resources would go out of print as soon as the limited time exhibitions were over at the museum. So we're going to use these resources to build our museum ministry as well. Now onto resource number seven, highlight artifacts exhibits. What do you mean by that? We've decided on what's the top 10 exhibits from many museums around the world, especially those related to biblical background. We're going to select certain one and show the artifacts in front of you, or we're going to teach you by lecture. So these museums around the world, like Israel's museum, the British museum, the Acropolis museum from Athens, or the Egyptian museum, etc., etc. We're going to show you their top 10 exhibits, either through artifacts or teaching. Resource number eight, specialized maps in Chinese. Now we've spent years translating seven regional studies maps from English to Chinese. And these are valuable resources authored by Dr. Choi's teacher, because they teach us basically all the geographic locations and features of the Holy Land in detail. So we are going to create our own maps in Chinese, but based on these valuable resources. And we're going to make use of the maps we created for teaching and also sharing with Bible teacher around the world as well. Finally, resource number nine, virtual immersion experience. Our museum is going to offer online visits to anywhere around the world. Yes, our physical location in Vancouver makes it easy for people to visit, those who live close by, I meant. But that doesn't mean if you live elsewhere, our museum will become irrelevant to you. No, we're going to use the latest technology to offer virtual visits online. For example, we're going to film videos uh, introducing each of our theme and each of our exhibit and then publish them online. And for example, also Sunday school class or fellowship groups are most welcome to come join us for our field trip, either physically or virtually. This will certainly become an engaging experience to learn certain biblical themes. Now that we've gone through all nine resources that we'll use to build our museum ministry, let us also briefly share with you six uniqueness of our research and exhibition. Number one, our focus is on discipleship and apologetics. Through biblical background teaching, our goal is to nurture brothers and sisters spiritually, but also at the same time equip them to defend our faith, to understand the reason why we believe that Christianity is true. Number two, we are unique in that we'll make use of multimedia aid. We're going to film teaching videos. That's going to convey teaching by our staff. But at the same time, we're going to also make use of short animation videos. And we're going to translate those from English to Chinese whenever needed. Number three, our museum is unique that we will feature multilingual explanation. We've done our ministry mostly in Cantonese and Mandarin in the past, but in the future, hopefully we can add English to our language as well. So all museum illustrations, publications, video broadcasts, etc., will be made in these three languages to help us reach the widest audience possible. Uniqueness number four, we're going to partner with experts. For example, some scholars might have specialized research on the Dead Sea Scrolls or David's Kingdom, for example. We're going to invite these experts to exhibit their research together with our artifacts at our museum. Number five, our museum is unique in that we want to equip all the Bible teachers out there. That's important. So no matter whether you're a pastor, Sunday school teacher, or seminary professors, etc., 
we know that it takes a lot of time and effort to prepare your teaching, especially preparing visuals. So whenever you're preparing content that's related to any of our museum themes, we'd be glad to support you by making our resources available to you to enrich your teachings. Better yet, you might even consider bringing your students to our museum as a field trip to learn certain topics together. Our goal would be to train up more teachers so that more believers can use our material to teach your own students. Finally, number six, our museum is unique in that Dr. Francis Choi teaches us all from his first-hand experience of visiting museums worldwide. If he hasn't been to a certain museum, he won't teach you about it and pretend that he knows a lot about it. So that's going to give everyone an authentic and also enlightening experience from his teaching.